Good Friday evening, everybody. I am KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist David Paul in Houston, Texas. This is your Friday evening Atlantic Tropical Update, the Friday before a Labor Day weekend. We've had a lot of famous storms on Labor Day, but I think this Labor Day things will be relatively quiet. Where are we in the season? We're in the heart of it. September is the time when the hurricane season peaks. Statistically, right on September 11th is the statistical peak of the mountain as far as Atlantic hurricane tropical development, and we're right about there. So where are we compared to the forecast from Colorado State University? Well, this is their updated forecast. Uh, they were forecasting 18 total named storms. 14 is an average year. Last year we had 30. Last year was incredible, record season. Hurricanes, they're forecasting eight. Normal is seven. Cat three or higher major hurricanes, they forecasted four. A normal year is three. So let's just start and stay with total names. So they're forecasting 18 named and 14 is the average. So far we're at 12 and we're at the, the peak of the season, really not even quite there yet. So that means we're probably going to exceed a normal season of 14 and probably at least get to their forecast number of 18 named storms, which would take us to, let's see, this is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, at least to Sam. So at least to Sam would meet Colorado State's University's forecast. Uh, let's see, we've had one, two, three, four, five hurricanes. Uh, so far, two of them have been uh, major hurricanes, Grace and Ida. But Larry, who's Cat 2 now, is very likely to become a Cat 3, Cat 4, making it the third major hurricane of the season. Looking down on the northern and western hemisphere tonight, our special feature is Larry, Cat 2 Hurricane Larry. You can see that forecast continues to take it into the open water. This one is probably more likely to impact people. 30% chance something develops in the Gulf early next week. I'm not overly concerned about intensity with this one. I'll show you why. Now, nothing's set in stone, but as we move along, I'll show you where I expect and what I expect that thing to do. This is Larry. This is the uh, uh, visible imagery from earlier this afternoon. The sun's gone down there this evening, so I recorded a little bit of uh, the uh, visible. And it's just perfectly symmetrical. That's a hurricane that's getting its act together. Uh, as we look at the uh, enhanced infrared tonight, it's tightening up. It's trying to get that perfect central dense overcast. That will happen when you see that deep convection, the bright whites wrapped all the way around the center and the center, the eye is developed. We now have, a, have an eye with Larry. So this is a hurricane that's clearly ready to rapidly intensify. Winds at 100 miles an hour on this Friday evening, moving west northwest at 16, pressures down to 978 millibars. Looking at water vapor imagery, this is just a beauty. Textbook, perfect outflow at the upper level. So water vapor imagery really allows us to see what's going on near the top of the atmosphere more clearly. And you can see we've got this clockwise flow at the upper levels while right at the surface an intense counterclockwise rotation. It's a broad high pressure area sitting on top of this intense little low that is the center of Hurricane Larry. When you see this type of pattern at the upper levels, this perfect outflow, it's perfect exhaust for this heat engine that is the hurricane. You get that perfect exhaust uh, at all quadrants around the storm when you've got a storm that's ready to really explode in intensity. And it's going to 125 Sunday, 140 Sunday afternoon, and then maybe back down to Cat 3, 120 as it gets near Bermuda. But at the moment, we do think the storm will pass to the east of the island nation of Bermuda. This one will be nowhere near the continental United States. This is a fish storm for all intents and purposes. Good. Now to this interesting little mess of uh, tropical disturbance over uh, eastern Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. What there is of this is Invest 91L. So they've named it an Invest. They're running spaghetti plots on it, but they're kind of, they're kind of a mess right now. I'll show them to you in a second. It's because we don't have a very well-defined low pressure area for them to initiate off of just yet. Winds are at 25 and some of the stronger thunder showers. Northwest at 16 is it where it is. And you can see it's just not very well organized, but there is some sort of broad tumbling, a broad circulation which means at the moment it's a weak circulation, but it's there nonetheless, and that's why the Hurricane Center is trying to run its models on it. Now, these are the current spaghetti plots, and they are uh, quite inconclusive right now, and that's to be expected. This is a broad low pressure area. It is not actually cut off a low yet. It's not a, it's not a depression, 
so the models don't have any one tight spot that they can initiate off of. And quite often the result is you see the spaghetti plots just kind of become a real mess and they don't give us a whole lot of real tight uh, information, but they do in general suggest this is going to drift into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Now, I said earlier that I, I don't think this is going to be a powerful tropical system. That being said, look at how warm the water is. 87, 88, there's some spots near the coast of Texas and Louisiana that have water temperatures uh, near 90 and 91 degrees right now. So there's a slug of very warm water in the west Gulf of Mexico. It's possible that what there is of this will drift over that warm water. But just because you have warm water like this, very warm water, does not mean at all that you're suddenly going to see intensification. Water is not the greatest factor in storm intensity. You need it, but you've also got to have that perfect upper level wind flow at the top of the atmosphere. You've got to have that perfect exhaust or the storm gets sheared and can't develop. And I think it's likely that whatever tries to form down here is going to be sheared. Now, this is, these are surface wind forecasts. This is the European model. I think the Euro has as best a guess as any of the models right now. So that's the one we're gonna show you. Obviously there's a lot of uncertainty in this right now, but I think this is the best guess based on the synoptic pattern that I'm seeing. So we go into Monday and what we get is a broad, weak area of low pressure. Maybe a tropical depression forms, maybe not. But notice how broad that low is and it's elongated. Okay, so it's already being tugged to the Northeast by a little bit of upper level shear. We go into Tuesday and Wednesday and you notice a couple of things. We've got a little bit more intense low pressure area, but look how it's still elongated. It's still stretched. That's a, it stretched all the way down to the Southwest Gulf. So it's, it's being elongated. Another sign that it's being sheared by southwesterly shear at the upper level winds. And we'll look at those in a minute. Another clue that you've got shear is because we've got a surface frontal boundary pushing in. Those cold fronts are a reflection of a trough at the mid and upper levels. And that trough, will be in the lee of the trough here with our developing system and that will be helping to steer it and rip it off to the north and east. So with this synoptic setup, a front at the surface, you'd expect to see a sheared system and one that was moving northeast and that's what the Euro suggests. That's why I think this is the best guess that we have on how this is gonna develop right now. So we go into Thursday of next week and look, it's already near Jacksonville, Florida and it's weakened and still sheared and then it races off the Carolina coast by next week, by Friday. Interestingly enough, that front is forecast to push out into the Gulf, fizzle out, but we may get a northeast breeze up here in the Gulf. They'd like that. So let's look at the upper level synoptic pattern. So those, those were the surface wind forecasts. This is the forecast for the upper level winds, the flow at 34,000 feet, the jet stream, if you will. This is your jet stream location next Wednesday. There's our special feature trying to get going down here in the Gulf but we've already got this trough and it, it is dipping down all the way to just about the Gulf Coast. And we've got a little, a little troughiness here too, helping to push the storm to the east northeast. So that's why it's being tugged. It's feeling that trough. Trough digs in, it gets caught in that flow going into Thursday. And at this point, this storm, if there is a storm in that position, if that ends up verifying, it's going to be heavily sheared and it just won't be that strong. Doesn't mean you can't have significant impacts on the coast of Florida or even into southern portions of Georgia with wind and rain and the tornado threat, that type of thing. But it doesn't look like a very big hurricane, if at all, if it even becomes a try, if it even becomes named. And then what there is of it races off and is off the Carolina coast by Friday, heavily shear, that'll race up the northeast and we'll be done with it. And look at this troughiness all the way down to the Gulf. That may drive some lower humidity air, some drier air down to the Gulf Coast uh, as we head into Friday. That's next week. So again, just a reminder, these storms to get going, to really crank these hurricanes, they need light winds at the upper levels and you need exhaust at the upper levels because it needs to be perfectly vertically stacked got to stack it up perfectly vertically to get it to go to cat one, cat two, really be a powerful system. When you've got the upper level winds, like we're forecasting for that upper level shear to be blowing across the top of the storm, it elongates the storm, it tilts it over, that disrupts the circulation, and quite often not only will it keep a storm weak, but it can keep a developing storm from ever developing. So all this being said, we may not even get a system in the Gulf. It may just be too sheared. A lot of uncertainty with these early track runs. So it's just something we're going to have to kind of watch through the weekend. 
the long weekend. We'll keep you posted. You got questions, you got comments, hit me up on social. Until next time, enjoy your Labor Day weekend.